there was a little turn and there was a little twist and I thought I would show you today how I take plain cones of yarn and turn those into a custom dyed baby wrap warp within a day and a half. So today what I'm going to show you is taking these plain cones of yarn and turning them into a 40 meter warp that I was able to get measured, dyed, and beamed in about a day and a half. I should preface this by saying that I have heavily invested in the equipment and tools I have in my studio. That allows me to work very quickly. I'm also, just by nature, I'm very efficient. I just am going to show you little tips and little tricks that I use that might help you. I hope they do help you, or I hope you get some benefit from this video. Actually, if you do, I would love it if you'd give me a thumbs up on this video. It really helps. Anyway, so I'm going to just get the yarn on the rack and put the yarn through the pigtails. And then I put it through a tension box and I use a Leclerc tension box. I'm using a skein winder to measure, but I use my beaming stand as a place to put my tension box. So I run it through the tension box and onto the skein winder. So you'll see here, I, I'm pretty careful. I make sure that they're all really nicely organized because the more organized you are at the beginning, just everything goes smoother. You don't want your yarns getting tangled around each other. It's just so much better if you're just organized from the very beginning. I like to keep track of my yarns at every stage. I'm very controlled with them. So we get it through the tension box, as I said, very carefully. And I wanted to make sure that they're I put them in in two inch sections because I know that I'm going to put them on my two inch sectional beam when I'm done. So I'm very careful to make sure everything from the very beginning is done to that spec. Okay, so I use a skein winder. It's a motorized skein winder. It does have a counter on it. But what you'll see I do is I turn it by hand. Every time I spin around once, that's two meters. So I find it's just easier, just count out loud. I do use the counter on it, but that's only as a backup if I have to stop in the middle to fix a problem. So I count along as I spin it and I'm just, I'm doing a 40 meter warp. So I just spin 20 times around. It's really quite easy. Once it's all, um, once I get it to 20, I, I lock it in place. You can see I use a pair of scissors here and I lock it into place. Well, I pull it tight. I wanna have tension on it. And then I put a piece of tape to hold the yarns exactly in order. I cut it apart and then I tie a knot right away in the yarn that's coming off the cone. And then I put this spacer on and I give it a flip and this just helps hold the tape on. I am going to put a chip clip on over top, but this is the key, this is the, the key. I tried to get really good videos of this to show you because this is how I keep everything organized. And then I take that end with a clip and I'm going to connect it to where I started when I started the um using the skein winder I've got the so the both ends of the yarn are together and I put a little a little thread through I call I do figure eights is what I say and I connect it like that I put a couple other figure eights throughout the warp they're my ties you know basically but I make them loose because I have to dye it and I don't want it to make white marks if I make the ties very tight you'll see those that it'll act as a resist when I go to dye it so it's just that and then I, I twist them into a skein and I set them aside, I do. So I'm doing a 30 meter warp, it's two inch sections, so I'm gonna make 15 of these. And this takes no time whatsoever. I think I did it in, it might have taken me an hour, an hour and a half possibly, to measure the entire 40 meter warp. It's pretty quick. Measuring check, all done. So then what I do is I take the yarn into, I call it the dye studio. It's just around the corner there though. And I soak it in really hot soapy water. If it's a smaller warp, I will often boil the yarn, but in this case, it's just, it's a lot of yarn. So I filled the sinks up with hot water and I soaked the yarn in this hot soapy water. I use a little Dawn in there before I put my yarn in. And that really helps clean the yarn and get it ready to be dyed. So you'll see the water didn't get too yucky. It's not, it wasn't too bad. So I take the yarn out of there and I put it through my spinner just to spin out all that yucky water. 
and then I pop it in a soda ash bath. And I have this bath, this big bin of soda ash that's already pre-mixed. I, I have it ready to go at all times. So I just throw my yarn in there and I let that sit. In this particular case, I actually did let it sit overnight, but I really only need to let it sit in there for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Then I take it out and I'll spin it through my spinner to spin out a good bunch of the the liquid, the, the soda ash bath water. I don't want it to be perfectly dry, but I don't want it to be dripping wet either. So then I take it from there and I really carefully lay it out on my table in order. Those chip clips are all numbered. And so I keep them in the same order, one through 15. And that's because when I dye it, I wanna be able to put it on my loom in that exact same order. So I'm again, keeping track of everything, keeping everything really organized. So I lay it out really carefully so all the ends line up in the same place and then I, I just don't have to. It's just, it's gonna come out the way I want it. You know, usually, usually it's gonna come out exactly the way I want it. While the yarn was soaking in the soda ash, I mixed up my dyes and I got all my dyes ready. I had pre-organized the colors with the custom holder on this warp. So I have one lady, she submitted a picture of what her inspiration was and now I'm trying to match that inspiration. She and I had had some discussion around that as well. And then I just dye, I dye, I like to say I dye with a free spirit and an open heart. I just dye with whatever strikes me. So I'm spreading the dye on and I leave it overnight and the next morning I come down and I rinse it. So my method of rinsing is probably different than a lot of you. And I do want you to know that these colors I'm using, while they look fairly saturated, they're actually uh, fairly diluted. So I know in my I know when I'm rinsing these that they aren't gonna need a ton, a ton, a ton of rinsing because they're I just I know these colors well. So what I do is I take them off the dye table and I put run them through my spinner. It's the first thing I do and I spin out as much as I can and that gets rid of a good chunk of the dye, it's crazy. So I spin these out and then I, while I'm spinning them out, I have pots on getting ready to boil. So as soon as I spin them out, I pop them in the water and I bring them to a boil and I boil the yarn and I know this, I just keep thinking, people probably think I'm crazy, but I just, I boil the yarn and then I take it and dump it in my sink and I just spray it with cold water until it's cold enough for me to handle. And once it's cold enough for me to handle, I squeeze it out a little bit and I run it back through my spinner. And then I take it back to my sink and I soak it in, um, a bucket of mill soft very quickly i really just you'll see i just dip it in and out of the mill soft squeeze it out and then i put it in another really hot bath of water and that way if it is not rinsed properly i will know it's not rinsed properly because a the color will come out in the mill soft but b it will definitely come out while it's sitting in the hot water i'll see it coming out and i like i said before i know these colors and i know they would rinse out really well if I'm not sure the color is rinsed out really well, I will double check before I mill soft because sometimes I will have to reboil a second time because as you'll notice, very little rinsing actually happened with this yarn. It's, it's mostly been spun out, soaked in water, spun out. Anyway, so once it's in the mill soft, I rinse it out in, in hot water, very hot water, and then I, I just spin it out again and it's done. That's it, it's really fast. It's, I can rinse, like this 40 meter warp, it took me about, again, maybe an hour and a half to rinse. It, it was fast. And that's because of the techniques that I have. And I've developed these techniques, you know. It, it, it used to take me, gosh, sometimes it would take me literally days to rinse a warp. And now I'm doing it in like an hour and a half. So I've learned techniques, my spinners really help. Anyway, so then it's dry and I take it and I hang it up and it dries. So once I set it to dry, I have a big fan and I blast the fan on it. And sometimes I'll use two fans. And then by morning it's dry and I can beam it. And I have another video. I have a follow-up video to this. Actually, there was a twist in this. There was a little turn and there was a little twist and I will have a follow-up video to tell you what happened 
and I'm going to give you the end results in the next video. So I will meet you there. In the meantime, please check out some of my other videos. I've got one over here that you might be interested in. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.